Hey, hey, we have Mixbuzz 32C version 4. I've got it, I've been playing with it, and I'm gonna tell you all about the cool things that you can do with it. Let's go to the computer. So, this is Mixbuzz 32C version 4, and it looks beautiful and it sounds beautiful. Um, I'm really excited, as you can tell. Uh, <laughs> the lovely folks at Harrison sent me a copy a little bit early so I could have a, a look, have a play, give it a test, um, and do a video for you guys. So, let's have a look. Well, first of all, um, if you're familiar with version 4 and you watched my version 4 tour, which so many people have, amazing, um, then you'll know about some of these features, but there are some things that are specific to 32C that I'm going to talk about. That'll be more towards the end. So I'm going to try and do this with a slightly different flavour than the original video, um, but hopefully cover all the same points. Um, first up, the GUI looks different, doesn't it? And it looks better. <laughs> um, the Let's start in the top left-hand corner. The transport has been shrunk down to a more reasonable size. We don't need a big transport. You know, it's just taking up real estate on the screen, and we don't need that. Um, you'll also notice that... On the top right-hand corner, our mixer window and our editor window are kind of combined. They're attached. You can go back to the old mode by going mixer detach or editor detach in the window drop-down. But this is brilliant. You, your key command still works the same. Your control M um, to flick between them. Uh, but you get to keep your transport and your, um, you know your overview mode and all your top buttons in your toolbar, um, you get to keep them in the mixer window. So that's cool. Now, obviously, if you have used version 4 or you watch the version 4 video, you'll know that the, the mixer is slightly different on 32C, and this is something that's been the case since 32C was launched. The EQ is different. It's obviously, it's based on the Harrison 32C, and there are 12 buses, um, 12 mix buses, instead of the eight that you get with version four. So, um, you, you know, you've got some extra leeway for using them for auxiliary sends or using them uh, as grouped buses and so on. Um, and I, I should say this, this DAW sounds so good, as with all the Harrison stuff. Um, if you're not a Harrison user, just, just have a listen to it or, you know, get, get the, um, I think there's a demo available. I can't recommend it highly enough for in-the-box mixing or even out-the-box mixing. You know, I've got a big desk, but I still do a lot of summing in, you know, uh, sort of pre-mixing in, in Mixbus and send things out through the desk. Or, To be honest, I'm doing less and less on the desk these days because it sounds so good in the box. Anyway, I ramble on far too much. What else have we got in our... Well, let's have a look into the preferences. Um, if we go into the toolbar section... We can see all the things that you can access in the toolbar. We've got record punch options. We've got um, monitor options, which is the options up here. So we've got auto input, all in and all disk. Um, you'll notice that the the input monitoring and uh, you know the, the monitor modes of the channels have vanished. Well, they're hidden in a little drop down here. And I believe there's a shift command, uh, which I can't remember at the moment, that allows you to apply the same function to all of the tracks without having to go in and select them all. Um, so we've got, um, you know, we can put everything in all in mode for when we're setting up a recording session, all disk mode for when we're when we are doing an in the box mix, uh, and auto input mode for when we're doing kind of overdubs and things like that. Uh, or, you know, we might have a band in the room and we want to communicate with them. Even situations like this where I have a voiceover mic this is in um, auto input mode. And of course on solo isolate so I can solo things and it won't remove my, my voice from talking to you. So that's the sort of the basics of the channel strip. <coughs> um, we'll talk more about the channel strip a little bit later. Um, we've got our input mode. Um, we've got, you know, uh, follow range and auto return. We've got some some time code stuff we can right click and view these in different in different uh views um and you know our range selection which will come up here so we can check ranges and we can see how long our 
lengths are and such like. Um, and then this, this little baby up here, which, um, let me get the correct name for this because I always forget the name for it. Um, it is the Navigation Timeline, I think. <laughs> navigation Timeline. Um, uh, it's incredibly useful because if you are, you know, careful, and for instance, you you might want to um, uh, set up, I don't know, Chorus 1. And chorus 1. If I can press chorus one, there we go. Um, then obviously that will appear up here. We simply click on And we can return to that point even in the mixer window. So, you know, it's a great way of jumping around the, the project just without having to go back to your edit window. And it saves me so much time since version four came out and I've been doing this. You know, I might save... 10 seconds or five seconds but it, once you start saving 10 seconds or five seconds hundreds of times every day it makes your life so much easier so that's a cool tool and finally well obviously we've got the editor and mixer flick buttons here but finally we've got this little lua script area and we can view up to eight quick buttons for our Lua scripts. Now, Lua, um, spelled A-L-U-A, is a scripting language that's been integrated into uh, Mixbus, and we can do all sorts of really cool things with it. I've got some scripts coming out, uh, which we think are going to be part of the Russell Cottier Mix Bundle, and I'm really excited to tell you about them, but I can't yet. Um, uh, they do, well, Lua scripts can complete everything from custom plugins to uh, you know, session scripts, which is where you might want to run a, a a particular function, which you can assign to these eight buttons. Um, or, you know, we can just, we can pull them in with the scripting manager, which, whoa, there we go, script manager. Um, and we can assign, you know, all different action scripts, action hooks, and session scripts. So action scripts are things like, uh, well, I've got faders to trim set up here, and I'm going to run that. Any of you who are familiar with like relative mixing, maybe on the SSL consoles or trim mixing on other DAWs and so on, will will enjoy this. Um, basically, the this particular script, which comes bundled with with the package, um, it will let you set up a mix. So we have a mix set up here, and we might have. A fader right down here and we might want to do some fine control on that fader or all the faders in fact so all we do is we click the script faders to trims button and lo and behold all our faders have returned to the zero point but the sound is exactly the same because a amplifier plugin has been added for each fader so our levels are all you know correct now we can do our tight fader rides and we can have a much higher resolution look at that i can wiggle a fader and you know there's a much larger distance per decibel at around the zero point than there is if my fader was right down here you know i do a tiny wiggle and i'm really scooting through um, the decibels there. There's also action hooks. I've got save snapshot after every export setup. So that does exactly what it says on the tin. You know, every time I do an export, it will save a snapshot. And, you know, you could think of all sorts of cool things to do, couldn't you? With, um, you know, you might be doing, uh, I don't know, a, an audio book or something, and you might want to have, after every time you press stop, you might want to have a, a, a marker put in or something like that. And it's all stuff that you can you can actually do yourself with a small amount of programming uh, skills. And there's loads of um, loads of action scripts you can go and customize as well. Session scripts are similar as well. Um, these are ones that kind of run. They're loaded into the processing engine, and they run in real time. <laughs> it's easier if I just read it out. Um, so you know, stop at marker that's the one that's currently available in in the, in the setup here but you know you could create some more you could load some more in let me just show you the scripting interface as well because this is really good it's basically a little programming interface and you can you can um oh i don't know bring in 
snippets and work on them and then save them and then they'll be accessible or you can run them um and you can do all sorts of great things i can't say too much about what we're doing with the russell cottier um scripting at the moment but it's very exciting trust me this this kind of thing i'm using um scripting every day now in my mixes and man it's just it's it's like living in the future let's just put it that way so i've prattled on enough about the toolbar um what else have we got well we've got something really cool you might have noticed when i dropped this down yes vcas vcas are now present in mixbus 32c version 4 track add track bus or vca so i'm just going to add a vca what's a vca well it's a voltage control amplifier and it sort of comes from the days of the old um automated mixing consoles which used instead of flying faders they would use a voltage controlled amplifier and that would be controlled by a very sort of primitive computer sort of setup or, or even not a primitive computer setup just directly off a vca fader um and they're really useful so how do they work well i can have groups of course uh, this is group is called dan drums um now what i can also do is so i might want to assign these drums here to the dan drums group that's fine yeah but what i can also do is i can assign individual tracks to a vca now i'm just going to assign these two and look yes the vca allows me really high resolution control over these faders look how much longer it is as well um and you know i can just trim things up and down as required now the keen-eyed amongst you will have noticed there are some new buttons as well there's a spill button yeah what's happened i click the spill button and it just shows what is assigned to that vca you can do the same with these buses as well now what what is this for well if you've got a, a track with i don't know a hundred tracks of audio or something and you've got everything grouped together you know you don't need to be viewing all of the drums while you're working on the guitars so instead of having a view group or anything sort of complicated like that you just click spill now the cool thing about spill is that it knows what is assigned to each bus so i've got some graphical issues due to my screen capture software here um it knows what's assigned to each bus and or you know vca and as that changes so let me just add something else to this vca and click spill the items that are assigned will come up automatically when you spill so that's pretty cool isn't it um what else have we got well there's a few other kind of fixes um keyboard shortcut changes um windows management alterations um but the cool thing that i noticed when i um i installed mixbus version 4 was that we now have access to mac vsts um and of course you've got au and lv2 and um the linux simple developers um protocol uh and also lua as well so we've got loads of different types of plugins that we can access and you know there's no risk now really of um of feeling left behind because most developers who are releasing plugins will either do an au version or a vst version um, and there's loads of great sort of free kind of community driven vsts as well that people have been making so yeah um vst on the mac um if you're a mac user and, and you you want to go to mix plus four it's great um almost too many plugins available now so there's some tempo change um uh management uh alterations have been made um in mix plus version 4 and i've actually done a separate video on that so i'm not going to go into too much detail with that i'll put a link in the description below 
Okay, so there are two more things that I wanted to discuss with you, and I left them both to the end because although only one of them is um, exclusive to Mixbus 32C version 4, they kind of relate to each other. So let's have a look at our buses. We have a knob that gives us stereo width. We can move it down to mono, we can spread it out to stereo, and that's really cool because it means we can, you know, we can make panning changes for groups down the line to make things more or less tasteful more or less wide and we can automate that as well um i do a lot of width automation in my buses and this is a feature that i've really been waiting for to, to pop up in mixed bus because it is invaluable um also you know you sometimes if you've got a reverb you might want to bring it down make it a bit less aggressively wide likewise with delays so why does this relate to the new exclusive feature? The new exclusive feature is panning in the Mixbus assigns. Now, you might think, oh, well, we already have panning, don't we, because we've got a pan knob. Well, no. This pan knob now simply, well, it can control panning to all the different Mixbuses, but once you go into concentric mode here by shift double clicking on any of the Mixbus sends, we get a concentric mode and the outer ring so the inner the inner knob controls the level that goes to each bus the outer ring controls the pan so we can shift drag that and move it around now why is that cool well it's cool because it means we can have a different pan for each individual group. We can pan our sends to our reverbs differently to our um our pans to the master bus that might be good because you know for instance when i i mix fiddles uh, violins in a, in a folk context i quite often pan the reverb to the opposite side uh, or more reverb to the opposite side you know say they're panned to the right i will pan a lot of reverb to the left it balances the sound in a small group but it also helps kind of not swamp the violin as it is um but give it a, a, a nice ambience so there's lots of different reasons you might want to use those um, that um, parameter. And uh, it's really simple to get to. Just double click, shift and drag click. So, yeah. That's Mixbus 32C version 4. I'm sure I've missed some fundamentals out here because there's just so much new stuff and it's so powerful. Um, I'm really excited. It's out on Monday, which is when this video should be out. And... I think you're all going to really love it. Happy recording. I'll see you next time.